So in the Niagara Falls area, whether you're planning an overnight getaway or just a week-long trip in general, the small towns offer visitors opportunities to discover different aspects of local cultures. There are different spots, you know, for great food, for people who love history, maybe arts, um, and even for outdoor explorers. So the table of contents for today, we're going to be going over uh, Port Orwin, Port Hope, Stratford, Erin, and Niagara on the Lake. So the first one that we're going to go over is Port Rowan, which is just about two hours west from the Niagara Falls area. And this is a small community that is cherished by many um, nature lovers so here I included some pictures just for you guys to see like where um, this area is and kind of you know in the daytime and also in the evening to really get the full experience. So the first location that really stood out to me was Long Point Provincial Beach. Um, this is one of the most popular camping spots in the area and it has spectacular um, soft sand beaches and a cool thing that I really liked about um, this area is that they have uh, benches here and shaded areas like if you want to go and maybe do a barbecue or you know just spend some time with family and share some great meals. So the birding um, about this place it really has to do with people who really like bird watching or interested in um, getting into this hobby and it's a fantastic destination for bird watching for more than 300 species um, are currently um, living there and this is also um, near that area of the Long Point Bird Beach. Um, it's where you can observe the rich wildlife and the Long Point extends up to 32 kilometers into Lake Erie and it has a concentration of the birds, insects, and even bats during their migration. So here I included um, the runtime of this observatory, which you can go ahead and visit from anywhere 9 a.m. until noon. And on the left top here, I kind of included like some of the events that you can do uh, throughout specific months. Like in April, they have a daily bird banding demonstration. In May, there's a great Canadian birdathon, which are all super cool events that if you're interested in birding or even just getting outdoors and getting some exercise or you know, you just want to enjoy some time with your family. Um, another great thing about this city is that there's a lot of ports there. Um, this is often nicknamed the Canadian Everglades or the Canadian Amazon because of the multiple outfitters um, that offer fishing and boats. So here at the bottom left, I included the Marina Shores. And then uh, next to that, you can see that there is Port Rowan Harbor. And so I just included some pictures of what it looks like, um, you know, with some boats there and stuff like that. And I also wanted to include some notable places like dining experiences. So the first one at the top left is the Country Fork and they serve some sandwiches, some prawns and even steaks at this restaurant. And visitors also mentioned that there are pancakes there. So I'm assuming that they have breakfast and they have a really nice cozy atmosphere that makes customers feel relaxed and the prices are pretty affordable there. Another place that really stood out to me was the Twins Ice Cream Parlor. Um, Canadian dishes are on the menu here, like frozen yogurt, banana splits, and waffles. And you can also enjoy some refreshing coffee or milkshakes. And then on the right side, I mentioned the Boathouse. And this is more of a bar type um, kind of place where uh, they sell uh, drinks and also some food, like coleslaws and chicken wraps. And a lot of people um, were talking about the pudding that they have that tasted really, really nice. And they also had really good comments about the service that, you know, their waiters are very um, attentive to the customers. So yeah, here are some places that, you know, if you wanna check out uh, to eat, um, I included these in here. So on the right side, I included some pictures um, from around the city, which I thought were very nice. 
And the first destination that I wanted to talk about um, was this river. And it runs through the middle of the town and is one of the best streams in Ontario. Um, you can go trout and salmon watching, and you can do other fishing as well. But there are some popular events that are held at this specific river, like the trout and salmon. And then another one that I wanted to include, you might be wondering, like, what's that picture in the middle of the screen at the bottom? So this is an annual river race. And so first time sailors and seasoned boaters take on the fast flowing river that runs throughout downtown of Lake Ontario. Uh, this one-of-a-kind event highlights costumes, homemade crafts, and is a 10-kilometer paddle frenzy to mark the town's big flood in 1980. So this uh, city is also known for its historic town, as the river boasts waterfront um, nature trails and a sandy beach. They also have a historic downtown, quaint villages, and scenic country driving routes. Uh, any amount of time here is time well spent. So here I included the, some of the different types of experiences that you can get here in the city, like more the city life, or if you're interested in going down to the beach, or even just taking a walk down uh, some of their natural uh, trails. And another place that really stood out to me was the West and East Beach. And so locals appreciate this coastal lifestyle right by the water. Uh, there's two sandy beaches, which are like the West and the East Beach both steps to downtown shopping and dining, and both beaches are usually uncrowded, um, so you can have a picnic or, you know, just some time to relax. And so here I included some pictures on the left side. Um, you can see that when the snow fell and it's kind of, you know, drying up now, it looks really pretty. And then also the next two are just um, how the beach look in general. So this city is also known for, you know, their art, music, and theater. And so the Capitol Theater is a vintage movie theater with amazing live shows. They also um, show films and, and they have events like the vintage, vintage Film Festival in September. And then in the middle here, we have the Port Hope Arts Festival, which was held in August. And basically they have food, music, and a lot of makers in Memorial Park. So you can visit like art galleries, studios, um, and then you can see things like painting, sculpture, pottery. And I believe that was the previous year, 2021, where they had this arts festival virtually. So, you know, you didn't get the full experience where there was food and, you know, music, live music and stuff like that, but they did hold it virtually. So you can um, see these art festivals um, through your computer and it was completely free. So on the right side, I also included the Port Hope archives for, you know, to discover some more colorful history about the city. There's some historic maps, there's postcards and photos like the shots of the laying cornerstone St. Paul's Presbyterian um, Church in 1905. It does put on one of the world's best annual Shakespeare um, festivals. So yeah, the first one that I wanted to highlight was the festival. And so since 1952, the festival um, has an annual season that it has grown to display about 12 plays. It's a mix between the Shakespeare and some modern pieces as well. And so I included some of the popular plays like Chicago, Hamlet, The Misser, and all of these um, plays are on between April 6th to December 31st. And so, yeah, I included um, these great theaters and some shots from uh, some famous plays. Um, the next one is a music festival. So music is as equally important and part of the community heritage, and they host the Stratford Summer Music which is an annual multi-week music festival with over 100 events featuring over 350 individual artists. And they play at different venues within the entire city. So um, one can be in one destination, someone could be playing at a different destination. And the program is very diverse and exciting, and it exposes um, audiences to a very high standard of music. Um, and so this music festival usually happens between July 21st and August 14th. And another thing that Stratford has grown um, to really ad uh, be admirable about is their premium arts town that they have. And, you know, in addition to the Stratford Festival um, and the music festival, 
They're always filled with theater, music, and visual arts. So here I included two um, great locations that I found that had really good reviews. The first one on the left, um, a must stop for indigenous arts. And then I included the address there. And I included the picture of the sign outside, which I thought was really unique. And then on the right side, we have the Shakespearean gardens. Uh, this garden is dedicated specifically to Shakespeare. Again, I included a picture and the address of um, where this place is. And another cool place was the uh, Avon River, which the river adds greatly to the uh, picturesque setting of Stratford. The famous Royal Shakespeare Theater is uh, situated next to the Bancroft Gardens on the river's edge. They had, a, you know, like these statues here, this nice bridge. Um, you can have picnics here. They also have benches um, in case you want to sit on some tables. And there's always a lot of swans, ducks, and geese around this area, you know, in case um, people who are bird watchers here. Um, but yeah, even if you don't want to have a picnic, you can just take a walk uh, on, the, on the side of the river, um, which seem really nice. Um, so ne the next city that we have is the town of Erin. It's also another uh, rural community just located um, about in the southern part of Ontario, which is about an hour and a half from Niagara Falls. And they have a lush rolling countryside and some nice rivers and even some small settlements um, areas throughout the whole city that you'll encounter. So they are known for a great shopping experience. They have scenic rural uh, vistas, quaint shops, and small town charms. Um, I'll wait you on your day trip to Erin. You can wander throughout the beautiful downtown, enjoy the shops, and find some unique treasures. They have a lot of vintage, um, but also some modern um, type of like shopping areas that you can visit. And then on the right side, um, I also included the Aaron Farmer's Market, which I thought was really nice. And so, yeah, if you're looking for some nice pieces for your home or you just want to cruise downtown, I think it's really nice to visit some of these small places. And then also you're supporting small businesses. So, yeah. And some popular events um, that they have here are the Aaron Fall Fair and then the Window Wonderland. And so the Aaron Fall Fair is just like you know, your typical carnival. Um, they also have music, they have live music, they have food. Um, so yeah, I thought that was really cool. And then the Window Wonderland is uh, kind of during like the holidays, Christmas time, New Year's type of thing where they decorate the downtown very beautifully. So I thought that was another thing to highlight. And for people who kind of just want to stay out of the town and want to do more scenic routes, they also have a lot of outdoor scenery places like the Alora Cataract Trailway connects you with nature on the 47 kilometer trail and it travels from a town of Fergus, which is, you know, a little bit further away. Um, and then it connects you with the village of Cataract. And so this 13 kilometers weave through the CBC lands from Hillsburg to the cataract. So yeah, I just went over a little bit of where um, kind of this scenery is. And so I thought these pictures were really nice. Um, the, the leaves are beautiful throughout fall. And then, you know, you can see a waterfall um, and some nice bridges. And going back to a little bit more of in town things that you can do, um, they have what's called the village of Erin. And this is basically um, the downtown area where all of the shops are. So this is what it's called, the Village of Erin. And on the left side and on the right side, I included some of the things that you can do, some of the events that they host. Um, so a lot of these events were to be determined just because of, you know, with the whole pandemic, they wanted to see how um, everything was going to be. So um, some of the ones that they'll have is the St. Patrick's Day Festival, an Easter egg sale, uh, summer celebration, Canada Day on July 1st. Um, another one is the Erin Fall Fair that I mentioned. They have October 9th, 10th, and 11th. And then the Window Wonderland will start on November 19th. Uh, so stuff like that. And then on the right side, they also included like um, some biking areas that you can do the farmer's market, some nice walking trails. This is just about 25 minutes north 
Um, it sits on the shore of Lake Ontario and at the mouth of the Niagara River. It's known for its wineries and the Summer Shaw Festival, a series of theater productions, and the flower-filled tree-lined Old Town features 19th century buildings, mainly along Queen Street. So yeah, here I included a very beautiful picture of Niagara on the lake. And um, this is the closest destination from Niagara Falls. So the Shaw Festival is a major Canadian theater festival in the Niagara on the Lake, and the second largest repertory theater company in North America. Uh, this was founded in 1962, and its original mandate was to stimulate interest in the George Bernard Shaw and his period, and to advance the development of theater arts in Canada. Here I included um, some pictures of the theater, what it looks from the inside and the outside. So what's really unique about this city is that it has a lot of history embedded into it. And uh, most of the Niagara Peninsula was a battleground during the War of 1812, in particular Newark, which is now known as Niagara on the Lake. So this was a name change that occurred um, after the War of 1812. And so on December 10th, 1813, under the order of General McClure, commander of Fort Niagara at the time, uh, the American troops retreated from the town. So upon the retreat, Newark, which is known as Niagara on the lake, was burned to the ground with only two buildings in the entire town surviving. The town we see today shows the strength of the founding residents and how quickly they recovered from the destruction of the war. It does not resemble what the town first looked like. A lot of improvements have been made since then. This war occurred in this area and, you know, it was destroyed after it. But people were seemed very intrigued to build up their city, you know, and the place that they grew up and they love. So on the right, I included a famous painting uh, from this specific war. And so they do really... Um, showcase this war that occurred in this city. And so this um, area called Fort George uh, is basically a military post that defended Upper Canada against um, American attacks back in the day. And so you can wander through eight restored buildings. You can hear military music performed by the 41st Fife and Drum Corps. And you can also just em enjoy the beautiful views of the Niagara River from here. Um, you can also listen to trained interpreters in historical dress dresses um, that share stories of the lives of British soldiers and their families during this time, as well as the fateful day the fort um, fell to the American forces. So yeah, I thought it was really cool that they try to really showcase what occurred during this time, the lives of the soldiers and their families, and kind of throughout the whole wars. Um, the horse-drawn carriage rides. Um, so you can explore the rich uh, history, majestic homes, and peaceful scenery the way it was intended by a horse-drawn carriage. This is a guided tour that typically goes to the waterfront through the historical downtown and down the main streets of Old Old Town. If you, you know, sometimes after walking for such a long time, you get tired and your feet start hurting. So I thought this was a really unique experience that you can do um, to kind of just get a tour of the entire city. And so here I included some pictures um, of some guests that, you know, were on this tour. And then at the bottom right was um, a picture that one of the guests on the carriage actually took. And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you guys so much for listening. So if you guys want to um, watch the recording once again, you can either visit our Niagara page, um, specifically on the Cyber Seniors website. And then, and if you guys do have any suggestions about other topics or resources that we can go over for you guys, you guys can email us at the email address that is listed there. So yeah, thank you guys so much for giving me your undivided attention. I appreciate it.